Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys a bit about the basics of how you can set up a enemy AI to have him jump when he comes across a pit or a wall that he thinks he can jump over. So the script for the enemy is pretty simple, but I'm providing that for free on my Ko-Fi page, so if you want to go ahead and download that, you can find the link in the description. So let's jump into the actual enemy here. So when you take a look at my setup for the enemy, you'll see a few nodes that aren't necessarily standard there. You'll see a ground detector and a jump blocked detector. Uh, so these are both actually just standard Area 2D nodes. So an Area 2D node, if we take a look at the inspector over on the right, you can see that it's monitoring and it can be monitorable as well. So it is referring to the region under it and it'll keep track of when bodies enter or exit that region. So it can either track bodies or other Area 2Ds or both. So when a physics body or another Area 2D enters those, you're able to actually see that because Area 2Ds keep track of physics bodies and Area 2Ds that enter and leave the collision shape that's nested under them. Another very important point about these Area 2Ds, when you want them to properly detect the tile map, you need to make sure in the inspector under collision object collision, um, I believe it's the mask here, for where you want your collision object, the Area 2D, to actually scan to see if there are in fact physics bodies inside of that. So in this demo game, the layer I'm using for ground tiles is layer one. So to detect a ground tile, I need to make sure that my mask is looking here for layer one for any physics objects. And to make sure that we don't count things like a player or an enemy as other walls or ground tiles, then we should take our players and enemies and put them on a separate layer if we're going to have them on one at all. So if I click on enemy generic here at the top and I scroll down here to the collision, you'll see that the layer I'm currently using for the enemy is layer two. So by using layer one as the mask, I wouldn't detect another enemy because the enemy is on layer two. To detect an enemy, I'd have to use mask layer two. So just keep that in mind. Uh, when you're setting up your Area 2Ds, whatever you're looking for, you need to make sure that that is on the mask that is set on your Area 2D or it won't be detected. And make sure that you separate out your objects so that you only pick up the objects you're actually looking for. So the collision shape, as you can see here, this rectangle up here for the jump block detector, and this one down here for the ground detector are just simple rectangle shapes. So those are the regions which the Area 2Ds are looking for. So down here, of course, we're looking to see if there's ground in front of the player, right? So if there is no ground, then we can tell the player to jump. And then up here, I have the jump blocked detector shape. So this is looking for wall tiles that are in front of the player and reach a certain height up here. So just picking an arbitrary point up here that I assume that this character uh, cannot actually reach over. I'm sure you could actually do it through a calculation as well. But to keep things simple, if you know how high your character is going to jump, you can just kind of move this and test it until it reaches a height where the character can't jump over it anymore. So basically, we want to stop the character from trying to jump over walls that we know that the character can't reach over. So that's what that's about. And then the other node you'll see in here, a direction flip as a node 2D. So this serves no purpose other than being able to take the nodes under it and flip its direction. So we might want the sprite to face the left and these checks to face the left when the character is moving to the left, right? So when the character is moving to the right, it makes sense to look in front of the player to see if we can jump over a wall or if there is ground in front of the player. But when the player is moving to the left, we want those checks to be over here. Um, the ground to be down here and the sprite to flip. So by changing the scale value on direction flip, uh, which is in uh, transform scale and the scale X specifically, then we can take any nodes under it and it will flip across the Y axis just by using that. So that's just one way of doing things. Let's take a look at the actual script. So once again, this is a uh, free download on Ko-Fi if you want to take a look at it. So here are just the speed values for the jump and the character's base movement. Uh, we have an export reference to flip node, ground detector, and jump block. So if you do use this script, you'll need to click on the character body 2D you attach it to, and you'll need to, in the inspector, assign those specifically. So you'll need the flip node for flipping across the y-axis, and then assuming you want both to check for the ground and check for walls that are too high for the character to jump over, then you'll need those area 2Ds as detection as well. So scrolling down here, you can see that the move direction is a vector 2 variable, 
defaults to facing right, but you can change that in the inspector if you want your character to move uh, left by default. And whenever this is set to a new value here, we also take the flip node and we change its X scale to match the new direction. So if we're going to the left, the scale is going to be negative one. And if we're going to the right, then the scale is going to be one. So that will keep the uh, everything under the direction flip facing the right direction. And then down here, we have the logic for determining when the enemy character should automatically jump. So first, we want to make sure that the character is on the floor. So this bit about the not is on floor is for adding gravity to the character when he's in the air. But if we are on the floor, then we can come down here to this logic. We're making sure that the ground detector has no overlapping bodies or the character is colliding with a wall. So under those conditions, we come down here to determine if we should uh, flip the move direction or if we should jump. So if the character detects a wall here that is too high to jump over with the jump block has overlapping bodies. So looking at the 2D view again, that's just checking this area over here to see if there is a tile under it, uh, which has a collision shape. And then we're assuming that our character can't jump over that tile. And instead of jumping over it, if we look at the script, we're just going to take the move direction and invert it. So if we're moving to the right, then now the character is moving to the left. And if there is no wall like that, then we're just going to make the character jump. So basically, if there's a wall that the character can jump over or there's no ground in front of the character, then we're just going to jump. And then this bit of the movement is actually just from the default uh, character body 2D movement template. And the last bit here is just the jump function where we add the jump velocity instantaneously. So we don't factor delta in here or anything. We're just adding uh, 300 to the Y velocity. And that's going to decrease, of course, from the gravity while the character's in the air. So let's go ahead and show it one more time. So let's run over here and we watch as our enemy looks for those walls he can jump over. But when he gets to this one over here, he can't jump over that. So he reverses direction and starts hopping over to the left. And presumably, if we had a wall over here, which I do not, uh, the character would reverse again as long as the wall is too high for him to jump over. So, uh, well, there he goes. So that's basically in a nutshell how you can set up some generic jumping for a enemy AI of a platformer game. Once again, the script is in the description if you check my Ko-Fi page. Thanks for watching to the end. I've been Chris, and hopefully I'll see you guys in some of my future Godot tutorials.